Hey guys, this is Shannon with Black Sheep House. In today's video, I'm making over this old dresser. We're going to give it a modern makeover, but still have that warmth. And I wanted to make this video very beginner friendly so that even if you've never flipped a piece of furniture, you've never painted a piece of furniture, you can watch this video all the way through and learn exactly how to do it. These are also the color choices and the dresser choice that I would pick for a beginner. So you can see this is not not solid wood so any damage or messing up that you might do or painting it is not going to make anybody mad this dresser was destined for the dump honestly I saved it and it's got lots of damage and we're gonna fill that with an easy quick repair we're gonna be taking these ornate details off the bottom with an easy to find tool that you can get at Walmart for $20 and is almost as easy to use as a curling iron and replace it, um, new hardware, and just really just glam this piece up in a modern way. It's, oh, it is so good. I know you guys already saw the pictures at the beginning, but this makeover is so good. <laughs> So this dresser, like I said, was destined for the dump and it needed a thorough cleaning, vacuuming, and all that good stuff. I found some really cute handles on Amazon. They're black, square, modern. I think the square shape is going to go really well with the square shape of the dresser. It's a very boxy look the dresser has, and so I wanna keep that going with the shape of the handles. I'll remove these old handles, donate them, and then there'll be two holes where the old handles were, and all I'm gonna do is use wood filler on one of the holes. Most of the dressers that I see in magazines today have the handles further on the outside of the drawers. And so I'm just gonna fill the inner hole and leave that one on the outside. So no drilling, just filling in this makeover. I'm using an old Brillo pad that's been used a little bit with washing dishes and stuff because I've had brand new Brillo pads in the past scratch the surface that I was preparing to paint. And so now I use an old one mixed with um, Dawn dish soap and I also use a wet washcloth as well. I'll go on with the Dawn dish soap mixture all over, scrub, 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 and then I'll go back through and wipe away any soap residue that may be left behind with just warm water and a washcloth. Thoroughly cleaning this dresser before I paint is absolutely paramount because this dresser was dirty and my paint will not adhere if it's a dirty surface. And I'm sure that the paint that you guys are using won't adhere either. So you really want to make sure that your dresser is super clean. And one thing I see a lot of beginners accidentally do is just miss the nooks and crannies. A toothbrush or some kind of bristled cleaning brush really works well for cleaning those crevices and you really don't want to skip that step because when you go to paint furniture a lighter color that will be where you will see what's called bleed through and it'll come through the paint it'll come through like in a brownish kind of stain looking way on those um, crevices and I've made that mistake um, early on a lot so I've definitely learned now how to thoroughly clean a dresser and the other thing is when you're cleaning your dresser if you're noticing a lot of red color on your washcloth that is a strong indicator that your dresser is going to have bleed through and so you'll want to make sure and prime your dresser with an appropriate primer like zinzer bullseye and make sure that you don't have bleed through um, come through your paint now I constantly check my washcloth and I always use a white washcloth so that I can see if there's going to be any bleed through issues this dresser, the drawer slides were not broken, but they were a little sticky, and so I'm taking my WD-40, which I also use to clean the refrigerator, a stainless steel refrigerator <laughs> cleaner, <laughs> works great, 
and you can just spray it on a paper towel and then rub inside. You may be tempted to try to like wash it with soap and water, but that would actually be a horrible mistake because it will rust. So when you're trying to clean metal parts, always clean with oil. WD-40 works great. And now those drawer slides work smooth as butter. This dresser did have a little bit of a some kind of like musty maybe just it's been in storage or whatever and so I'm using the Zep odor spray from Home Depot. I don't love the smell of it but it does remove odors and I also use Odoban as well. Again I don't love the smell of it but it does remove the, or the odors and then eventually that smell disappears. I've also bought the little charcoal bags and used those as well. Okay, so this is Durham's Water Putty. It was recommended a few times in one of my videos, comments from the viewers, which thank you guys so much for your comments and recommending products I've never heard of. This stuff was so affordable. It was like a couple of dollars at Home Depot. I couldn't even believe it. And you're just going to like mix up a paste of water and this powder and that that is going to be like your putty and then it hardens and is your wood filler. I don't know if this stuff is stainable, but it is paintable and that's what we're gonna be using today. I don't know what the perfect consistency of what this wood filler is supposed to be, but I guess I was shooting for peanut butter. <laughs> and I did have to apply this two times. So put it all on there, scrape it away with your spatula or your putty knife and then sand it and then do the same process one more time. You'll see in the video I show you exactly what point I do that. I tend to do that after I paint and that really only works when you're using a flat paint or a sandable paint like I'm using today but I also do that step of filler again the second time around of filling um, after I paint because I want to get away with as much as possible, right? So if I had any pieces that sand that sanded perfectly and filled perfectly the first time, when I paint, those are going to look smooth. When I paint and there's a spot that didn't go as smoothly as I needed it to and needs another hit of the filler, then I can go through and do it. It just makes it a little bit easier for me to spot the areas that really need it a second time and I don't waste time with the areas that don't and I'm gonna have to paint this dresser like three coats of paint to get it from dark to light anyway so why not that's what I personally do you could certainly just do all the filling and sanding beforehand as well and I know many furniture refinishers will do that but I'll tell you a lot of people end up filling and sanding after they paint as well because it's like you don't see those flaws and mistakes and there'll be some spots that you just didn't even fill that you are like wow I missed that because with the dark finish it's really blends in and you don't see it but when you paint it light oh man it really those holes and gouges and scratches really pop out at you. I don't mind that this piece looks a little rustic. I'm not going to fill in every single dent and make it look really modern. That's not what I'm going for. I like it to feel worn in, McGee & Co style, hearth and hand style, just a little bit of ruggedness, but refined. The next part is the biggest transformation that this dresser goes through, in my opinion, is changing the bottom skirt. If you guys saw my video from last week, I got so lucky when I took the dresser and, and laid it on its back, I saw that underneath the ugly skirt legs were brand new modern legs and I didn't have to do any cutting or building, I just had to remove the front. I wasn't so lucky on this dresser, but we're gonna make the best of it and use a multi-tool that you can get at Walmart for about $20 and it's very, very very beginner friendly. This tool is super easy to handle and use. I'm a very small person, like child size small, <laughs> and I can operate this tool with one hand, okay? So you can definitely do this. Just mark out the design that you want and then get started cutting.
After looking at the dresser for a while, I really decided that that angled leg wasn't going to cut it, so I went online. I looked at some different dresser designs that I felt like matched the shape, the body of this dresser the best, and they all had the square legs. And so I'm just going to go with that, and I think that's going to work really nicely with the shape of this dresser and then the square handles. I know it's a lot of square going on, but I really think it's going to work. Yay, it is almost time to paint. First, we're gonna remove any debris that might be left from sanding with this tack cloth. I also wiped the piece down with a wet cloth, and this just removes any debris or dust that might be on the piece. I did vacuum as well. I always vacuum after I sand. I need to vacuum my pants. You can see there's a bunch of dust there, but these tack cloths are really affordable. They're just a couple of dollars and totally worth it. This is my paint selection. I'm pretty excited about these paint colors and it was really hard for me to choose just one, but I went with Jute and Cotton by HGTV. It's the paint at Lowe's and I'm gonna go with an Ovation uh, line and uh, there were so many good choices. Like look at the Outer Banks. Brandywine Falls was pretty. These colors just are so warm. Living Grays, Doming, Coastline Tan. I don't think you could go wrong with any of these. Stone Lion is one I use a ton for my paint washes when I'm trying to do a bleached wood look. So it, it removes any orange tones from your wood if you wanna do that. Then I'm going with the Ovation paint. And then these are the Wiz Cabinet and Doors foam rollers that I have been raving about. You guys asked me, the place I get them is at Lowe's, but I am gonna be looking for like an Amazon dupe at some point. I did go ahead and just cause I love the Wiz rollers, I bought the Wiz brush as well. And this paint is 100% acrylic. It is um, quite different than maybe other paints you've tried. This is not your typical uh, wall paint. It's very durable, very washable, very scratchable, <laughs> and it doesn't come off. So super good paint and very affordable. Oh, I'm so in love with this color. Like I said, this color is just going to be so hot. This 2022, we're seeing it in cabinets and on furniture and with the black and the gold elements, it's just, ooh, so nice. It really, really is warm and light and airy. And this dresser with the masculine shape, I'm gonna give it these feminine touches. It's just gonna be the perfect combination. So welcoming, love it. This paint goes on great with a paintbrush. There were definitely some bubbles in the finish when I used the paintbrush, but I don't know if it was just my method or the weather or I don't know what was going on, but it doesn't matter anyway because I'm going to roll. 
And I think that rolling is way more beginner friendly and it's definitely more Shannon friendly. And I like to work quick and efficiently because I have ADD. Anyway, yeah, I, I roll everything these days. That's just how I roll. <laughs> so get it on there with the paintbrush, not too thick. I'm going to re-emphasize that line, not too thick. You want to, by the time you roll over it with the dry roller, your goal is to remove paint from when you paint it on there with the brush. So you're going to put it on there, get it on there with the brush, nice and even, as even as possible in all the crevices and all that jazz. And then you're going to go over it with the roller. This is a paint on roll off method. Maybe you've heard of the roll on brush off method, but this is a different jam and it really works for me. I think it'll work for you too if you give it a try. I know a lot of DIYers want to get a smooth finish and if you don't want the hassle of messing with a sprayer, this is the next best thing. Of course, this is not a sprayed on finish. You did not use a professional sprayer. It's not going to look as perfect as the professionally sprayed finish, but it is definitely, if a sprayed finish is an A+, plus, this is an A. If you try this method before and it gave you a textured surface or a dimpled surface, then you probably had too much paint on your brush, too much paint on your roller, both maybe. So you want to get a thin coat of paint on there with the brush and then an even thinner coat of paint once you do the roller. So if you just rolled and it's not thinner, if the paint didn't come off a bit, then then it's, it's just going to give you a little bit more texture. I'm not saying you can't paint it like that. You certainly can. It's just going to have more texture. One thing I will say, if you end up with a little bit of texture and you happen to have used the satin or flat finish of this particular paint brand or chalk paint, then you can sand it with a 400 grit sanding sponge and sand away quite a bit of the texture, especially on the parts that really matter, like the top and the drawers. I will frequently do that in between coats if I get a spot that's got some debris, or maybe I just kind of rolled it a little heavy, the brush was a little too saturated or whatnot, and it looks a little bit more textured than other parts. I'll just sand it with the sponge and wait for it to dry, you know, and, and move on with my next coat. I will say that you don't want to sand your last coat of paint, especially if you're going with a dark finish. So I just make sure to not sand my very last coat of paint because in my experience, it has led to streaky finishes when I go to apply the top coat because the sanded parts absorb the finish, whatever top coat I'm putting on, a little bit more than the paint does, at least this type of paint. So I can't really speak for all the paints in the world, but for the HGTV stuff in flat or satin, you don't want to sand the last coat.
I want to say a quick public thank you to Chris Hayden who told me to stack my drawers like I think cabinet refinishers might do it this way as well I feel like I've seen it somewhere maybe like on the Benjamin Moore website or something but he mentioned that in one of his comments and I love doing it this way now I just turn them all the opposite directions and I can still paint okay <laughs> I'm not a pro at it yet, right? It's like you got to get it on there just right. But he mentioned that and it I can still paint vertically, which you guys all know I prefer to paint vertically because you can even see the debris falling in my videos, right? This garage is so dusty. I don't know if all garages are, but this one is and I have the doors open a lot of times and so it just... I can't ha hardly have anything that's like sideways. Vertically is really the way to go for me. So this stacking technique is awesome. You guys can see where I am painting on my second coat and my first coat, I went ahead and I had to sand and refill some spots. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, you will likely have to fill, sand, paint, fill, sand, and paint again. And I'm sorry, but you're gonna have to paint one more time even before you're done. But trust me, it's gonna be so worth it. And it's not complicated. We're not doing anything fancy. We're just painting this beige color on. This takes you less time than painting a room for sure. I give myself about an hour for each step. So an hour to clean it, an hour to paint one coat of paint, an hour to, um, maybe sand and, and fill and all that stuff, an hour to do another coat, an hour to put another coat on. Does it take me a full hour? No, but that's just how I block it out in my mind and that's how I bill it as well for the designers. And like I mentioned earlier, you guys, I do get paid real money by real designers who are really good in Atlanta and they never, ever, ever complain about my finishes. So, that should tell you something that maybe you don't always have to have a sprayed on finish. Maybe it's just a little bit more about the look of the piece than the perfect finish. And so I think that's what I bring to the table is the design aspect of it, making dressers and furniture that is really desirable by the public. And that's what helps me make money. So when you're thinking about painting furniture for your house, don't stress yourself out with thinking that you need a perfect finish and that all your friends that come over and your family is gonna notice immediately that that's a painted dresser and judge you so hard or something. Or you're gonna judge yourself when you walk by it like that's not a perfect finish. It's okay that it's not a perfect finish. Is it a beautiful piece of furniture in your house? Yeah. Is every single piece of furniture that you do going to be better than the last one? Yeah. So don't judge yourself. Don't be afraid to try. And you will be amazed at how amazing your furniture can look with just a little bit of paint and some Amazon poles <laughs> and this $20 tool from Walmart. You could really transform some of your dated furniture and really update your home and just create the home you love and that's what I want. I want all of you guys to create a home and a space that you cherish and love being in.
This last step you see me doing is using some clear wax that I bought from Home Depot. It's bare clear wax, but you could use any clear wax for furniture would be wonderful. And you're just going to use a lint-free cloth. I get mine at the dollar store. Wash and dry it ahead of time to remove any lint that may be on it. I know it says lint-free cloth, but trust me, just wash and dry it. <laughs> and then I found gray works really well for blending in and not standing out if any lint does come off. You'll apply it in circular motions and then you can wipe it across in straight motions. That's just something that works for me, but a lot of furniture refinishers do it different ways. They'll buff it, make it shiny. I like to leave mine matte. I tend to go for a matte finish and I I go for a matte finish and end up with a satin finish every time. So if I went for a satin finish, I'd probably end up with high gloss. <laughs> but anyway, that is what I do. And then I have a trick up my sleeve. You guys can use a blow dryer. If you have any streaks in your wax finish, just pull out your hair blow dryer, turn the setting all the way on high, and you can use it to remelt the wax and that just helps it all blend in together so it's all one cohesive coat. This is one advantage to wax that I really like. We have a package. Amazon has delivered some more handles. I needed 10 handles and I think it was about $16 for 10 of them. The ones at Lowe's are a little bit more expensive and Home Depot has some too that are like this, but they're a little bit more expensive. So I went with the Amazon ones really cute. The square is so modern. I'm just obsessed. Are you guys ready? Are you ready? <laughs> Here's the makeover. I am speechless. I don't have much to say. This dresser was headed for the dump. It was kind of stinky and old and forgotten about. And now it's, ah, it's so good. <laughs> Give me your opinion. I was definitely in love with the black poles. And then I've got these gold ones. And I thought, ooh, those would look really cool too. Or maybe I'll do another piece. Uh, let me know in the comments. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.